about this, this game, uh, Thomas Was Alone. Thank you uh, for buying a copy, that's very kind of you, um, unless you've pirated it, in which case, please go and buy a copy. Um, it's in sales quite regularly, hopefully. It's weird speaking to you from the past. So, uh, this is Thomas. Uh, he is, well, he was named originally by the community. Um, the game's name, Thomas Was Alone, was, uh, it was arrived upon by a friend of mine who sarcastically suggested I should call the game Thomas Was Alone because that's emo and uh, emos would like it. So this this is step one, side-to-side -side movement. Um, if you're a platforming game fan, it should not present too much of a challenge to you. But here it's really just about easing the player into the way the world works. Seeing gravity for the first time, understanding how falling feels. And then actually kind of talking about that in the, in the voiceover to kind of have a bit of fun with it. It's also introducing uh, the idea of a narrated story and it's introducing Thomas. So we hopefully kind of do quite a few things here at the same time. It also does the job of setting up Thomas as an inquisitive character. Uh, this is really important and uh, he becomes inquisitive, he becomes more and more interested by the world and tries to make us jumping um had to be right it's it's kind of the main way you interact in this game obviously i did a lot of research i got kind of obsessive about it it took me i was still fiddling with the jump physics i think about three weeks before i launched the game so it's something that just got fiddled with and fiddled with and fiddled with it had to feel right um and yeah, it's it, there's one problem here actually, and I will talk about problems on this as well. Um, I think the biggest issue here was this is a challenging jump. So this is a jump where the player can fail at it. So there's a gap, um, but the, the whole point of this level is to introduce the idea of jump distance and the fact that you can fall from a jump, but hopefully in kind of a safe environment. So, so here you can't be, you can't die, you can't lose. Um, all you're going to do is is keep doing it until you succeed. I played a lot of Uncharted um, <laughs> before making this level, um, and it really, it's kind of inspired by that kind of those kind of scripted moments in games. I didn't do as many in the game as I kind of. I played a lot of Uncharted um, <laughs> before making this level, um, and it really, it's kind. Of, I played a lot of Uncharted um, <laughs> before making this level, um, and it really, it's kind of inspired by that kind of those kind of scripted moments in games. I didn't do as many in the game as I kind of expected to at the start, but kind of there's a few reasons for that. But I guess the main one was that once the player's kind of, you know, gets the mechanics in a good enough way, I didn't want to completely kind of overwhelm them with stuff that wasn't as interactive. But so this is this is a subtle one, but it's kind of important. And I know I'm talking a lot about um, game design introduction. This is this is by the way, this isn't like innovative in any way. This is this is Mario. This is every game you ever played. But I think it's kind of interesting to go through the steps. So here, this is a very specific skill. This is the um, this is jumping up under steps, but pressing jump and then moving once you've pressed jump. So here, if you just hold down you know the, the direction key and then jump, you're actually going to hit the bottom of a staircase. What you need to do is jump and then in midair move across and this is just a really subtle so here is the kind of we're extrapolating on precision um it's essentially uh we've done it in the previous level we've we've made you do it um and here we're kind of queuing up a few of those so if you fail at one you can actually force yourself to go back a, a couple of steps in the in the progress this is kind of the first time we're challenging the player um, which is which is important, but it's it's important as well that it's not overwhelming. Um, it's still very early days. I haven't yet shown you the the kind of the differentiating mechanic of Thomas. So it's it's again just kind of bringing players up to speed with stuff and and starting to show them how a game would work in this space. didn't add respawning to the game until about a month before release. Um, <laughs> it's a classic example of something that every playtest I ever did. Um, so basically, if you if you died in the game uh, previous to, uh, to a month before it came out, you were basically you'd reset the level. So it didn't matter how much progress you'd made, you'd reset the level to the very start of the level, all your characters back where they started. Which means that you could, if you died late on in a level, lose about five minutes of gameplay. This was not good. Um, and the playtesters were told, told me at length in capital letters that it wasn't good in emails. Um, but what I tried to do, uh, what I realised was it was very hard to do, but I worked out about a month before release how to do it, and went back and added all these respawn, respawner points. 
and I'm so glad I did. Um, if I hadn't done that, I think, the game, I think the game would have got very, 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 very tedious instead of its current level of kind of reasonable tediousness. Um, <laughs> it's lighting. Um, it's a weird one, the lighting. I, I kind of, I, well, I didn't have lighting at one stage. There wasn't light. Um, then there was sounding a bit biblical. Um, but as it went on, I kind of added that in. Initially, I was doing them by hand for every level, um, and basically this procedural system kind of came out of well, laziness. I didn't want to do that anymore. And, and weirdly, as a side effect of that, I, um, it, it was cool, and the shadows moved and could be kind of um, related to placement of objects, placement of characters, and it was good. Um, it's actually faked, because the game was made in uh, free unity. I didn't have any uh, shadows within the game kind of proper. So what I did was these are they're kind of stretched rectangles. So I place a, a corner of the rectangle at each corner which the shadow is projecting from, and then kind of stretch them off into the distance. Any coder listening to this just lost all respect for me, because that's the most wasteful way you could possibly do this. But it, it kind of worked, and uh, yeah, we just went with it. Um, and it, it's it's one of the things that people seem to like. So yeah, fortunately it's rectangles, so I can be wasteful. Okay, so this is the moving platform corridor. Um, this was uh, an attempt to bring in something that's going to become very important in a very short amount of time, um, the moving platforms. It's really hard to introduce moving platforms because moving platforms move, <laughs> and that makes them challenging and makes them uh, a kind of a complex interaction. So what the corridor here allows me to do is introduce you to the idea that sometimes the ground moves, but in a way that doesn't actually kind of impact you too much and won't cause you, hopefully, to, to get too stressed out. People seem to like it. It's kind of a bouncy castle level. People tend to, to have fun as they move through it, which is quite cool. Um, and yeah, it's, it, looks, it looks interesting, and uh, hopefully it just kind of introduces the concept. This is the most important level in the game. Uh, this is the point where I basically get to the point. <laughs> and arguably, I should have done it a little bit sooner. However, this is where it is, and, and that's fine. Um, so this is the point where the player has to learn how to switch characters, which is kind of the basis of the entire thing, is this switching between the characters. It's This is also actually one of the first levels. This is almost identical to the version that was in the original Flash game. You have two characters, both on the wrong side with their alternating targets. It's hopefully a space that makes a lot of sense. Um, kind of logically, you can understand what's going on with it. Um, there's no lighting that's complex in it. It's quite flat. Um, it's intentionally, hopefully, everything about this level is designed to get out of your way so you can learn, essentially, a f a, well, a few things. One, how to switch characters, obviously. Two, how to, um, uh, well, the targets, the targets are specific to the character. And three, the difference in abilities, so you should work out that Chris needs help. If I can get those three lessons to you, and if you've completed the level, then you've learned all those lessons, the rest of the game becomes much, much more achievable. Uh, this was a weird little accident. This level, actually, there's on the uh, on Thomas on the right there. Uh, as you move up, uh, you're moving through uh, trigger boxes. If you don't if you don't make games, trigger boxes are basically um, spaces you jump into or move into, and they cause something in the game to happen. So as you move up as Thomas, you're hitting these trigger boxes, which cause the um, the, the walls to come in. But as a really weird coincidence, I got one of the timings wrong. So that as you moved up, there's a certain point where it looks like you can jump somewhere. You jump to it, and the wall flies out and hits you in the face. Um, and it's kind of a funny moment. 
and I did it and I thought it was I thought it was funny and it felt kind of organic and I took it to um, when I started showing the game to people it happened to everyone it's a weird thing that it seems to catch everyone out even though there's nothing forcing you into it you know 90% of the time people get hit in the face and most of the time they laugh um, so I left it in and it's I'm really happy with it actually it's it's one of those nice little uh, coincidences that worked out really well <laughs> Everyone loved the steps. Um, they didn't actually, and I—it's—it's it's probably my biggest uh, design regret in the game. Is steps uh, basically uh, are kind of obstacles that you have to jump over by kind of uh, piling up a few characters in order to get through. That's fine. The problem with steps is that you have to do that repeatedly. That you have to solve essentially solve the same puzzle over and over again in the sequence, and there's just two or three too many times I do that in the whole game, um, and it's frustrating to players. Um, yeah, it, it sucks. I, I went through and I removed quite a few of them, so if you're annoyed, <laughs> you would have been more annoyed if I'd left it how it was. Um, so yeah, it's 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 a shame. It's I, I think there's, there's some which are more acceptable than others, um, but yeah, it's, if that's the worst bit of design in the game, I'm, I'm pretty happy though, so yeah, lesson learned. chance for Thomas to jump slightly higher than Chris. How fortunate. Seriously, this made the whole switch pressing thing entirely worthwhile. This level's a great example of um, how useful playtesting is. I this, this, this map was always very similar to this, but there was one major kind of design difference was that the stepping stones at the bottom of the screen had a wall had had no wall below them, so they were floating over water, which meant that you could fail about about eight or nine times here. Um, causing you to get very frustrated and angry. And it wasn't a soft fail where your character fell through and you got back up and carried on. It was a cruel, harsh fail that reset the level. Um, and, and my playtesters hated it. So this is a great, a great example of the kind of thing that to me was invisible because I understood how the characters moved and I was you know, making them and playing them all the time. To me, it was a really easy sequence of stepping stones that you can get through first time every time. But once I went in front of playtesters, I got emails from people saying it was taking them like 45 minutes to get through this level because of that that problem. So just sticking a wall underneath, I kept the water because it looked nice, but the <laughs> sticking a wall underneath really kind of helped and just smoothed people through. People are still working out the game at this stage and I don't want to kick them too much in the face. I've already hit them in the face with a wall.
Danny really, well, I should have mentioned Danny a little bit sooner. Um, he, he just does so much. Um, I, it's a, it's a long, long story that I've told lots of places, but ba basically I wrote the story for him. I, I was, um, trying to find a voice that would suit the game, and I was a big fan of his writing and, and his kind of audiobooks and, and radio stuff and all the things he does. Um, and I wrote the part kind of with his voice in mind. Um, and then I tried to find people who could do it and no one could do it, um, and then I got drunk and called, emailed him, and he said yes, uh, which was a bit, a bit of a shock. Um, so I'm really chuffed. He did an awesome job. Um, he's he's been really cool with the game. He's he's talked about it. He's been lovely, and he's just a really nice chap. He's also really fast. I'm recording this after recording some other stuff with Danny, and he just he's amazingly quick at what he does. I'm doing a much worse job, and the uh, the, the people in the booth are getting bored. I imagine at this point. <laughs> John's my favourite character. Well, I do. I'm going to say that a few times because I've got quite a few favourite characters. But John, John, I really in particular like. He's um, he's insecure um, in uh, in a weird way. I'm not entirely sure why he is, but he is. Um, and that leads him to kind of be dishonest and narcissistic, um, which I think a large, large number of uh, creative people will, will will associate with. I know I do. Um, and he's um, yeah. So he's he's a really interesting character. I like the way he grows. I like that his journey as he goes on, um, and I like the way that his power of kind of basically being the highest jumper is usurped later on by Sarah, and, and what that does to his view on uh, on his situation. So he's a very cool character. is another level actually from the original Flash game, uh, which obviously I tweaked and kind of brought across. I really liked the idea of confined spaces um, as applied to this game because with, with um, large spaces, 
having multiple Stop characters with different abilities kind of hopefully feels kind of empowering they feels like anyway. you can you know, do anything and get anywhere putting them into a confined space kind of becomes an interesting kind of jumble you kind of they get in each other's way they trip over each other there's a nice little bit of narration here that kind of highlights that stuff but it was just something really cool to play with the <laughs> the other thing is and i do this all over the place in this game um is i really love adding a character who has a specific ability and then not letting you use it for a little while. Um, but but specifically because I just think it's it builds anticipation. You know John can jump really high, um, you've, you've seen that. And to then put him in a space where you can't play with that button is is just kind of hopefully kind of intriguing and frustrating and you want to pull through and you're kind of with John in this level. John is angered by his situation, he just wants to be free. So hopefully kind of uh, the player aligns at that point with John. This level exists solely to allow the player to feel their way into John. Um, this is this is a chance for you to basically make him jump properly for the first time, and hopefully because of the, the constraints in the last level, that feels awesome. Um, and I actually use the word awesome in the narration just, just to push you in case that's not how you're feeling. Um, you should, it's a very good game. Um, and then, yeah, so you, you've now got access to this awesome jump, and you can, uh, you can, you can do what you feel. John decided to press the switch to let the little dots catch up with him. John cared for his new allies. You could tell from the sympathetic expression he'd practiced in the mirror all these years. is getting very self-deprecating but i think this is the weakest level in the game um i came very very close to cutting it this is where the the staircase repetition kind of becomes well boring um, <laughs> um i did do a lot i shifted things around um 
I've kind of varied the step sizes and gaps and to add variety. But but it's it's so it's a lot better than it was. But it was not. It's it's the one that when I'm watching Let's Plays, and I'll talk a bit more about Let's Plays in a bit. But the 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 way I yeah, it's kind of the one that I fast forward through on the Let's Plays because I find it. And very very slow i don't know that might just be over familiarity but um i don't like this level um, have fun with it though and i'll see you on the next one so much either. The red one, Thomas, had a charming way of applauding every time John jumped. The angry orange one was less immediately likeable, but his unremitting cynicism and tutting amused John. Thank you. 
This is the last, this is actually the last level of the demo, um, so it's kind of important for that reason. Um, but the, the kind of the big design lesson here, and you'll notice, I, I, I guess like the, 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 the lessons are slowing down at this point, um, but the, the big lesson here is that there's a temporary portal success. So previously all the portals have sat on a static ground, so you queue someone up, you queue someone up, you queue someone up. With this one, you have to finish this level by having Thomas falling through that portal. Um, and it's, again, it's hopefully it's kind of safe. If you if you miss your timing or you get him through early, you can always catch back up with yourself. So it, it doesn't punish you if you don't get it immediately. But it's something I really wanted to do later on. And there's quite a few places where I I play with this idea. Um, so, yeah, it's that basically. It's a, it's a way of introducing that and hopefully kind of hints at the possibilities if you're playing the demo of kind of where the game can continue on, on from there. Maybe that's what the dots were for. They were there to extend John's reach, to make his performance even more impressive. John liked the thought. He decided to keep them. Claire is all about the setup to to buy the fact that she actually thinks that swimming is a superpower, you kind of have to set her up before that as as feeling weak. And Claire's not weak. She's not a weak character. She's not rubbish at jumping either. That's something she says. She's she's on a par with a lot of the other characters. But that insecurity um, hopefully kind of warms you to her. And you're with her at the point where she realizes she has that superpower. You feel excited because you want a nice thing to happen to that character who you kind of had a, not pity, but kind of a sensitivity towards. What's really interesting with Claire is in a lot of the reviews and the kind of the chatter about the game that happens online, people say that Claire is fat and that she's insecure about being fat. Um, which is really odd, because I, I never thought of Claire as fat. She's big because she has to carry characters later, that's the kind of a design concern. And at no point does the script mention her weight or or even that she has a physical insecurity. Um, and that's kind of weird and odd, but it's also absolutely awesome, because if players are kind of coming to the game and, and placing these meanings on it without kind of me telling them, that's cool, it's, it's really interesting. Whenever fan art's done, she's the, you know, the big boned character. Which is fascinating, um, and I like that players have kind of built their own little story on top of her. So, so exactly the same way as with John, I kind of really enjoyed the idea of introducing a swimming character and then having a level that you couldn't swim in. Um, so there's that, um, and just me being cheeky again, basically. Um, but the, the big lesson here is the idea of getting uh, Claire to carry another character. So there's one point right at the start of the level you have to get um, John to carry Claire. You have to, there's no way of completing the level without doing it. Um, which was cool, and, and kind of introduces that idea of carrying someone along. And then you've got an optional, uh, you can do it over the stepping stones straight after, uh, with Claire underneath and John on top. Surprisingly, a lot of players don't do that. I don't know if they don't see it, or they kind of, it just doesn't, they don't make that leap yet. Um, but hopefully that idea's been implanted, because that's very useful later on. 
I said it was useful later on. It's actually it's useful immediately after, uh, which is this level, which is which is the payoff where you carry um, characters back and forth. Um, I also really like the whole um, the fox chicken grain logic puzzle, and it's kind of Thomas's little nod to that. Um, it's it's just something that people hopefully kind of will will work out and kind of start to see what Claire can do and start making um, start planning out with that ability in mind in later puzzles. Probably the most showy level. This is kind of this is epic. This is the one that always goes in the trailer. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. I stole Rain from um, uh, well the method for doing Rain from uh, Quick Fingers, who's an awesome Unity dude who I'm now fortunate enough to work with. Um, and it's it's cool. It's a big epic moment. Um, this is uh, much like those falling platforms earlier on. This is kind of one of those big semi-scripted sequences because the pace is defined by the water. So this is probably the most showy level. This is kind of this is epic. This is the one that always goes in the trailer. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. I stole rain from um, uh, the, well the method for doing rain from uh, Quick Fingers, who's an awesome Unity dude who I'm now fortunate enough to work with. Um, and it's, it's cool, it's a big epic moment. Um, this is uh, much like those falling platforms earlier on, this is kind of one of those big... This is probably the most showy level. This is kind of, this is epic. This is the one that always goes in the trailer. Um, <laughs> it's, yeah, I stole Rain from, um, uh, well, the method for doing Rain from uh, Quick Fingers, who's an awesome Unity dude who I'm now fortunate enough to work with. Um, and it's it's cool. It's a big epic moment. Um, this is uh, much like those falling platforms earlier on. This is kind of one of those big semi-scripted sequences because the pace is defined by the water. So therefore, I know that if a player is surviving, they are playing through at a certain speed. Um, and it's cool. It, it also builds on the the idea of carrying from earlier, um, but this time under pressure. So you have to move quicker, and you, you haven't got time to think. Um, and if you try and get Thomas off, this is probably the most showy level. This is kind of this is epic. This is the one that always goes in the trailer. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. I stole rain from um, uh, the, well the method for doing rain from uh, Quick Fingers, who's an awesome Unity dude who I'm now fortunate enough to work with. Um, and it's it's cool. It's a big epic moment. Um, this is uh, much like those falling platforms earlier on. This is kind of one of those big semi-scripted sequences because the pace is defined by the water. So therefore, I know that if a player is surviving, they are playing through at a certain speed. Um, and it's cool. It, it also builds on the the idea of carrying from earlier, um, but this time under pressure. So you have to move quicker, and you, you haven't got time to think. Um, and if you try and get Thomas off of Claire, you're going to have run into problems very quickly. So there's that as well. So it's hopefully kind of a, a nice way of, of solidifying all the learning the player's done about Claire up to this point. Is she more the Lone Avenger type? If you'd like that. The sole hero in a world of rectangles and conveniently placed pools of toxic water. Steps. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, in, on, on the upside, two things. One, I changed the shape of the steps. Um, which I feel kind of massively improves them. Um, <laughs> and two, I then sarcastically make a joke about steps in the script. Uh, so, so you can laugh with me at my uh, lack of design ideas up to this point. Mm -hmm. 